In today's video, we will be finally testing our breaking ground experiments and we'll try to answer what does Timo have on his hands. But first, we're gonna be designing this plane that will be taking those experiments all the way to the island runway where Timo Kerman, one of my long-standing patrons and channel member, so, sorry, patrons, will be able to disembark and put in the experiment. So, let's get into the building. First, we're going to be using the Mark II components because I really like building with the Mark II plane components because they give you a sense of, you know, speed and agility and speed. Right. However, building those components, we need to put in the hangars or the storage units for the breaking ground experiments. And I think this conformal storage unit is actually quite nice. I mean, it offers three spaces for various experiments that we will be testing. So let's just put here the experiment units and let's see what we can cram in. The GU eb monitor, the weather analyzer, probably, and also the solar panels. We have to make sure that all of our experiments can deploy. Come on, come on. Ooh. So if we place this guy and we place a lamp, maybe? No, not big one, a small one. Oh, those uh, EVA experiments could work. Okay, so we can place those and let's duplicate the storage. So here we have these two experiments and I think we need to place more solar panels and more experiments. So solar panel, we have two solar panels, these and okay. I'm missing the weather experiment. So, which I'm going to be placing here, and uh, the, you know, right, the, the various experiments, yes, I'm sorry, I'm post-recording this without coffee. So, let's continue assembling the plane. So, when assembling the plane, I'm, I have actually going with a very, very simple design, Weasley engines, turbofans, uh, those would require one radial air intake each, so I'm going to be placing them on this side. Let's just align them a little bit nicer. There we go. And then I'm going to be using the regular wings. I'm, I had some problems with procedural wings. I felt a little bit that those procedural wings have a little bit of... They're a little bit of buggy, I think. I don't know. Could be just bug between, you know, the monitor and the chair. I.e. yours truly. Right. So, there we go. This is the ladder. I'm just going to drag it a little bit down because I didn't like how it will look the first time. All right. Close down the mobility enhancer just so we can climb anywhere. We're going to call this the science plane. And the, the task of this one will be basically proof of concept. First, to show that the planes are controllable, that we have air brakes that are also controllable and that everything works. So I'm going to be placing two sets of control panels. The inner surfaces will be controlling the pitch, while the outer will be controlling the roll. However, I need to find the correct elevons, elevon 2, yeah, you will be controlling the roll and the canards will be controlling the pitch. The tail fins are all movable tail, so they will be controlling the yaw, but I think that doesn't give us a lot of um, vertical stability or horizontal stability so I need to I might need to place an additional tail section which will be you know non-movable let's just see where we're gonna be placing the air brakes air brakes I like to put them around the engines but this time I'm gonna put them on the wings and that's this design so let's if you see center of lift and center of mass I'm just trying to gently move the center of lift so it's just a little bit behind center of mass something like this this looks good then we need to be talking about the landing gear and I'm gonna use the medium landing gear here and the small nose mounted landing gear in the front okay there we go good enough I mean, that looks decent to me. For me, that's a decent space, or not space plane, but a plane. Right. And, of course, there are a couple of things that we need to take into account. So, one would be toggling the engines, two air brakes, three ladder, five, I mean, cargo bay if needed, and then ten air brakes. Nine flaps. That's the usual mappings how I do, so I don't make accidentally mix up uh, the control panels. 
it's really really handy and it helps me out so disable the steering on the rear wheel always handy braking will be with the 95 percent of the power here comes the tail section i know it's but as the beautiful morning haze approaches we are coming to the weather th which we would like to have for the flight which is something like this flat out lighting but okay let's select the crew we have kiltless and timo kiltless and timo kerman are my long-standing uh, patrons so they support me on Patreon, very, you guys are awesome, love you all, thank you very much for contributing and this is my little way of saying thank you to the guys who pitch in a little bit extra so I can do this awesome stuff. So now, you are going straight to heavens, you're gonna be shooting up and flying above the black cracks, beautiful volumetric clouds, I really don't like that it's this cloudy, I'm enjoying the sun, what can I tell you, I'm a, sun, I'm a sunny personality. So. What we're gonna do is just enjoy and marvel this beautiful thing as we fly a little bit closer towards the towards the island. There's the island, activate the navigation. So there we go, screenshots done, time to get back to the reality and to land. This mission won't be very long, but it is a proof, it's a technology demonstration for various technologies, namely planes, air brakes, wings, controllability and the breaking ground the experiments that will be providing us some science over time all of those will be brought with us to duna eventually and sooner rather than later i hope we will be able to m mount a manned mission to duna i don't know if we will be using uh, ssto to land but there will be some sort of lander so right all right we are not yet at that phase where we can still design that SSTOs, the technology is not there yet. Hopefully it will catch up. Now, landing easy, 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 kiltless, come on. No drift then! Oh, whew. Well, I know you're happy, kiltless, but you gave me a minor heart attack there. I mean, buddy, you were drifting like, you know, rally champion. I mean, after all, you know, you're not Colin McRae for crying out loud. Okay. Nevertheless, successful landing aside, thanks Quiltless, uh, now we will be going in front of the hangar where Timo will be deploying the science experiments. Here we go, thank you. Set the power brake. <coughs> yep, parking brake on and uh, we can deploy the ladder. Yes, apparently I create my own sound effects. Sometimes that goes very weird. Alright, so let us place the components. By the way, sorry for the visual bug. I have no idea why I'm getting these, but all right, whatever. And now we're gonna be starting to deploy the experiments. So first things first, where is my experiment unit? There we go. Now let us go and deploy that one. So Timo, put, choose a place where we can take a nice selfie, shall we? Shall we? All right, a little bit in front to the side of the plane, so it's not exactly in the plane's way of taking off. Good. And it deploys as I go and pick up another one. So, okay, we have the communications unit. Right, where are we going to deploy that one? Oh, just beside. Good call. What do we have next? We have the solar panel. Okay, so the solar panel should have some sun exposure, so I guess we should be placing it here in front. You happy with that? Okay, look, it deploys. Haha, -ha, nice. And the sound is telling us that these experiments are already running. So here's the weather analyzer. We're gonna be placing it down there, and look at how cute they are. I mean, I really like the deployment of all of these components. They're just amazing. Now. What else do we have? We have some more solar panels, you guessed it. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, once we deploy these, we're gonna probably go back to the KSC and report the findings, because we need to figure out if those will be re transmitting remotely. After all, it's easier to test them when they're a couple of kilometers away on the distant airfield then when you come to duna and some technology is not working as intended that would be a damn shame now 
Speaking of that, how many more we have to deploy? I think one or two there are left, so let's see, uh, not you, but yeah, there we go, additional solar panel, we have four I think, so we, there is just, I think, mystery goo that requires an additional deploy, and then we can perform some EVA science, yes. Now, there we go, let's stick the flag, obviously, branding is really important, Testing new technologies. There we go. We are good. All right. Shall we take a selfie? What do you think, Timo? We can't take a selfie. So grab here. There we go. Easy does it. Okay. You have something on your hairs, but hands, buddy. Oh, yeah. It's a green goo. It's a surprise. No, no. Just kidding. All right. So I think we have. The last of the experiments would be the mystery goo. And I thought that he got some mystery goo on his hands, so that's why he was shaking that bad, but guess not. And I well, let's do the EVA experiments. By the way, guys, the EVA experiments, it was a little bit nudged to one of the Apollo missions where they really tried to see how much would a golf ball fly if you hit it with the, with a club. So do let me know. Do you know how far it flew and is there any record who actually did it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear. All right. Now, boarding the plane and time to return back to Kerbin. Ah, it's a cool photo. Okay, Kiltless, are you ready, buddy? This time, please, not that much drifting. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let us go back and just grab a little bit of acceleration. Turn around, and I think we don't need a long stretch of runway, we just need an itsy bitsy little bit of it. And then I think around 100 meters per second we can already take off. This plane is very simple and that's why I like it. It flies beautifully. Now let's activate the navigation to the KSC. It's 28 kilometers, which means one minute of flight time. God, I love supersonic aircraft. Right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the upcoming missions. You probably saw in the uh, in the uh, alarm manager that I have some missions. Well, <coughs> there are a couple of them that are intertwined. One of them that's coming in the next episode will be the Drez mission, and uh, the Drez lander was actually sent out long time before this episode was ever recorded. But for the consistency, I'm gonna keep it in the next episode including, you know, the launch and all the way until some experiments were done and sent, hopefully. Now, that said, let us focus now on the landing. Our surface velocity is a little bit high, and by a little bit I mean a lot high, but we have air brakes for that, so what better way to land than pulling on, you know, handbrake right before you land. There we go. I didn't mean handbrake in the times of drifting again, kiltless. <sighs> We landed. Right, let me just grab my heart out of my throat and let us go back. So, Kiltless and Timo, you guys did very successfully and thank you so much for this beautiful mission. And I'm really enjoying the parallax mod. Look how gorgeous Kerbin looks with all the, you know, foliage and everything. So, we're gonna park just in front outside of hangar and hopefully we're gonna evaluate how much science did we get probably not much but there will be some over time so parking it here and let us recover the vessel so that mission netted us 20 science and we have 97 science so thank you very much for watching we have earned some ribbons and i'll see you in my next episode